Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In this video, we will upload multiple documents and at the same time, we will provide metadata to each of these documents and also perform validations on these metadata fields and then push all these documents at once to SharePoint from Power Apps. Let's check it out. In this demo app, I will be showcasing how you can add and tag multiple files to your data source. I'm on the home screen for this uh, application and in the home screen, I'm showcasing all the data from my SharePoint list. The SharePoint list is a very simple list that has the standard title column and I added a couple of additional columns, a multi-line text field for description and a date column for date. And we also have the out of the box attachments column associated with my view. This gallery shows me all the data from that SharePoint list. And typically we use the form control to go ahead and add additional items to our SharePoint lists or we create forms and we patch. So in this case, if I would like to add another invoice and I will go ahead and attach my invoice document right here and submit the data now is posted to my SharePoint list using the form control. Here's my data and this gallery will show me that same information right here. Now the scenario here is that many a times we would like to upload multiple files at the same time and tag each of them independently. So how do we go about doing that? Now, if I click on the add multiple items button here, it will take me to the screen. And in this screen is where we can upload multiple files and tag each one of them separately so that they can go into the SharePoint list as independent items with the attached file. So let's check how we can do that. In this case, I have added the attachment control right here. And in this attachment control, I can go and upload files. The attachment control has a maximum file size limit of 10 megs. And I've also designed the system in such a way that you can only upload 10 files. So up to 10 files, you can attach and start tagging them independently. So if I upload a file, let's say I go ahead and upload this invoice and this invoice, you have to upload them one by one. There is no multi uploading capability currently in Power Apps. So let's say I upload these four invoices and then I click this button to move them into the section so I can start tagging them. So this is actually a gallery control that I have leveraged. And in this gallery control, I have gone ahead and built out these different controls so I can go and tag each one of these files independently. So all those four files that I uploaded are right here. Right now, I have also entered some required field validation. So title and date are required. I can even go ahead and delete an item. And at the same time, I can go and add additional items. So if I would like to add another document right here, I can just push it right here and this will come right here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and tag these. Once I complete all the required field validations, only then this button will come alive. And when I click upload to data source, in my case is SharePoint, this will go ahead and start uploading all these files into my data source. And once it completes it, and if it is successful, it will redirect me back to the home page. And right here, I can see those new files that I just posted. Now, if I go to my data source, and if I refresh my data source, here are those files right here. And these are the list items that got created. In this gallery view right here, you can see the properties of the list item. And at the same time, you can also see all the attached files. In my case, I'm just attaching one at a time. I can even go ahead and open these files. So if I click on this little download icon, you see, the file just opens up and I can go ahead and either save this or just look at it. If I want to add additional attachments to this, if I click on this uh, item, this will take me to the standard form control. I can go ahead and attach additional documents to my list item. And if I submit this, this will go and update this item. And here you go. I can see all those three documents that are associated with this list item. So when I go to the add multiple items screen in the screen, what I have right here is the attachment control firstly. Now this attachment control is not something that comes out of the box. There is no control called attachment. What I had to do is add a standard form control, attach it to a SharePoint list data source and grab the attachment control that comes with it. So it's not out of the box. You have to grab it. I have done this in a separate video. I will put the link to that video in the description of this uh, video. So please go ahead and check that out. In the center right here, I have a gallery. How does this gallery get populated? When I click on this icon right here, I go ahead and add to a collection of files, the attachments that are in this attachment control. And then I go ahead and reset this control because every time the user clicks on this, I would like to load my collection of files. 
this gallery shows me that collection of files right here. In this gallery, I have this little delete icon. So if the user clicks on this, I go ahead and I remove this current item from that collection. And that's the reason why when I move things from left to right, and when I delete them, they are gone because they're going away from the collection. At the same time, how did I go about designing this form? Since this is a gallery control, all I did right here is actually just go ahead and build my form. Just go ahead, add your labels, add your controls and place them right here. And that's exactly what I have done. I have this button called upload to data source. This button comes alive only if the required field validations are complete. So let's say I go ahead and I upload a file. I move this right here. You will notice that this button is disabled. And I also get this message which says, please enter all the required fields. Now, if you look at the visible property for this label, I'm going ahead and performing a function called count if on this gallery dot all items. So for every item of this gallery, go and check if this text field is blank or this date control is blank. Now, if you would like to add additional columns right here, maybe your requirement is different. You want to capture additional metadata. Maybe there's a drop down or a combo box. You can add that same validation check logic right here in this label control. So this will show up right here. And the moment I finish my required field validation, the label will become hidden. And this button comes alive only if that label is hidden. How do I push all this data to my data source? Now there are multiple ways in which you can do this. You can actually go ahead and patch it to your data source. So you can loop through all the items of the collection, gather them and patch them one by one by using a for all branch. I tend to use flow purely because I can transfer all the data at once to flow and flow can go ahead and execute all of that in one go. In this case, if you notice my formula right here, first created a variable called success and I've set it to blank. This tells me whether the operation that the flow performs is successful or not. So this is a variable that I'm setting right now to blank and later on I will get the response from flow, which will tell me whether it was successful or not. Now, before I go ahead and walk through this part, which is how am I creating this collection called final data and how am I passing that to flow? One very important thing to understand is when I am uploading files right here in this attachment control and when I move this into this gallery, if you notice, I'm collecting the attached files in a collection called call files. Now, if I go to view and if I go to collections and if I look at call files, you will notice that it has the name of the document that I have attached and it also has this local association to that document that's held in memory. But when I pass the context over to flow, I actually need the binary equivalent of that file in this gallery. If you observe right here, I have an image control that is hidden. This is the trick right here. This is a hidden image control. You will need this in order to get that binary associated with your files. If you look, I'm using this item dot value. Now, what is this item? This item relates to the collection that's provided to this gallery, which is collection of files. And in this collection, the name is the file name. The value is that association to that local object that's being held in memory. In this image control, I'm using this item dot value. Now, when I do upload to data source right here, I am actually first going ahead and looping through all the items of the gallery. And then I'm creating this new collection in this is where you need to define all the data points that you want to pass to flow. So I'm passing title, which I'm grabbing from the text control name, which I'm grabbing from the label date and description and so on and so forth. But right here I've created this node called data stream. And this is from that image control dot image. So this gives me that data stream. That is what I need when I'm passing over to flow. So that flow has the entire data stream that it requires. Now that I'm done with this for every item, it's gone ahead and created this new collection called call final data. Then what I'm doing right here is I'm going ahead and calling my flow. And when I'm calling my flow, I'm converting this collection into a JSON object. And I'm also including the binary data right here. Once that flow is called and once that flow completes its run, it returns me a Boolean variable of true or false. If it is true, I am going ahead and I'm clearing the collection of files. I'm notifying the user that the files have been uploaded successfully. I'm showing that success message on the top for three seconds, and then I'm refreshing my data source and then I'm navigating the user back to the home screen. And that's why when I go ahead and upload multiple files, if it's successful, it just redirects me to the home screen and I see all the latest data right there. 
in case there is an error, I'm going to notify the user that there is an error, either try again or contact your administrator. Now let's look at what the flow is doing. So for this button, if I head over to power automate, this is the flow in action. In this flow, of course, the flow is being triggered from power apps. I have gone ahead and added a variable called Boolean, which tells me if this process was successful or not, because that's the variable that I'm returning back to power app. Then I have this variable called metadata. And in this variable, I'm actually grabbing the information that's coming from power apps. So from power apps, when I'm actually going ahead and calling this flow right here, and this is how I'm passing that variable as a JSON object right here. And notice I'm using string as a variable right here. So all that data is in JSON format and it's coming through from power apps to flow as a string. When I get that information, I'm first converting it to a JSON object right here in flow. Then I have the scope that I have defined and in the scope, I'm executing multiple actions. I'm looping through every item of this JSON object. So in the collection, I have multiple items. I'm looping through each item and I'm going ahead and first creating a list item in SharePoint right here based on all the data points that's available from that item JSON. And then I'm going ahead and attaching the file to that list item that just got created. And this is how I'm using another expression here to convert that data stream into uh, binary data right here. So once I have all of this information right here, I have put this in a scope. So all the documents will be uploaded one by one. If the scope is successful, I set that variable to true. If there's any error, I'm setting it to false. And then I'm responding back to power app with the response of that variable. In my scenario, I have used SharePoint list as a data source. If you would like to use SharePoint library as a data source, you can even do that. So you can just go ahead. You already have the file content right here. Go ahead, use the create file action, create a file, and then use the update file property action and update the properties of your document. So you can go either ways right here. Or if you have any other data source, you can leverage the same concept. Now this entire app is also available for you to download and install in your own tenant. So you can explore all the different uh, features that I have uh, utilized for creating this scenario. Let me show you how you can go and install this in your tenant. So now in a completely separate tenant, I'm going to go ahead and import that sample app. So the first step is in order for me to import that app, I'm going to go to import canvas app in power apps. This is where you can import the package. The link to download the zip file will be in the description of this video. And I have picked my file that I have exported. This will go ahead and upload your package into your environment. And right here, as you can see, it is going to go ahead and create the app with the name tag multiple files. If you would like to rename it, just click on the action tab here and rename it. The flow also comes along with the app purely because the flow is associated with the app. So I don't have to export the flow separately. And there is a SharePoint connection that's involved. So you would have to go ahead and select this and add a connection to SharePoint. So if you have an existing connection like how I do, you can just go ahead and pick it. Otherwise you can go ahead and create a new connection to SharePoint. That's because the demo app that I have built is associated with SharePoint. So you would have to link it to SharePoint in order to import it. Once you're done with this, you can click on the import button. This will go ahead and import the app as well as import the flow. Now, while this app is being imported, you also need a SharePoint list in order for that app to work with the data source. Now, because I have built this sample app with a peculiar schema for a list, you would also need to ensure that that same schema exists in order for the app and the flow to work. So in this case, what you would have to do is just go to any SharePoint site that you have access to. It doesn't matter where that SharePoint site lives in your tenant. Just go to any SharePoint site and go ahead and create a new list. Make sure that the list is called list data, L capital D capital list data, and then click on create. This will create a very simple SharePoint list. It will have the title column. Go ahead and add a multiple line of text column, call it description. Please note all of this is case sensitive. Hit save, then go ahead and add a date column, call it date, hit save, and then Go ahead and then go to show height columns and just include the attachments as well in the view so we can see the files that are being attached right here. Now that I'm done with this, I will go ahead and grab the URL of my SharePoint site. Your site URL will be different. Flow.microsoft.com. 
and go to my flows. And right here, you should see that new flow that got imported along with the app. Edit this flow, and you will have to make a few changes in this flow, specifically in the scope section. So in the scope section, the create item and the add attachment actions will actually throw errors. That's because they are pointing to my tenant. So you need to change this to point to your tenant. I created that list in a site called HR Hub. So I'm going to pick that site and I'm going to pick that list right here. So ensure that you change this to the site and the list where you created the list in your tenant. And you've got to do the same thing for the add attachment action as well. Just click on save. And once this saves, you should not have any errors or warnings. Click on save. You're done. So once you've gone ahead and created the list and modified the flow, go back to Power Apps and now you can either open the imported app or you can go to apps, search for this app and edit this app. Just gonna directly go ahead and open it for now. So this takes me into the edit mode for the app. I need to accept the connection to SharePoint. And once this app loads, you would have to go to data sources and remove this association of the SharePoint list data because this is connecting to my tenant from where I exported this app from. Go ahead and remove it. You will see errors. Then go ahead and search for SharePoint as a data source. Either create a new connection if you don't have one or select an existing connection. Connect to the SharePoint site where your list was created. Connect to the list data and hit connect. And if the schema matches the schema that I demonstrated while creating the list, if you go to the app checker, you should have no errors. If I play the app and go to add multiple items, there's one more thing I need to do. Right here, if you select this button, if you go to action and power automate, you will see the association with the flow. However, if you try to edit this, you will notice that this throws an error. So what you would have to do is this. You go back to this button and on the on select property of this button, copy all the code and paste it in a notepad. So store this code and then go ahead and clear all this code. Okay, make sure there is nothing on select. Now the next step is when you select this button, go to action, go to power automate again, and this time select the flows and this time select the flow called power apps, send files with metadata to SharePoint. So when I select this, this will now create the association again. And you can see that it shows the association right here. This time, if I select the three ellipses and click on edit, you will note that it actually opens the correct flow. And this is the flow that we modified earlier when we changed the scope so that it points to our tenant. Now heading back to Power App, what you would have to do is on select of this button, this code now shows up, which is the code to run the flow. Go ahead and clear this code. And all the code that we had copied earlier, just paste it right here. You should not have any errors. Now, if I play this app, I will go ahead and upload files right here. Hit next. You should see my required field validations are right here. I'm going to call this 2133. Just pick a date. I won't fill description since it's not mandatory for now. I'll pick another date right here and I'm going to hit upload to data source. Now, if everything works fine, Power Apps will call Flow. Flow will go ahead and push the data to our data source, which is SharePoint, and I get the success message right here, and the list data is populated. And if you go to your data source, if you just refresh your SharePoint list, you should see that data come in right here. So this is the sample app that you can download from the description of this video and execute the same steps that I have executed right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this was useful, please like, comment, and please, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get notified every time I post a new video.